let's go now to Westminster where Andrew Tirrey, chairman of the UK Treasury Select Committee, joins me now. Thank you for joining us. Um, we were just talking about what's happening with the Monetary Policy Committee now. Do you see that there will be more pressure on them, and if it is pressure indeed? Uh, Mervyn King seems to be quite happy to keep interest rates low, but also to inject some more QE into the market. Well, I listened to what was said just there a moment ago. It's plausible, uh, of course, that, the, that we may need more uh, QE, more quantitative easing, that is, printing of money. On the other hand, I didn't agree with the second part that was said, that, this, uh, that we, might be, we might be on the verge of a change in the mandate. That would be a very major step for the government to take, and I see no evidence uh, that such a step is imminent. It's true that in a deflationary period, fiscal and monetary policy need to be run very much in tandem. In an inflationary period, the separation between the two that comes with Bank of England independence gives confidence to the markets that the government aren't uh, playing with interest rates uh, in order to secure re-election. Mm. So we are in a period during which it's very important that the governor of the bank and the chancellor of the exchequer work closely together. Now, there are some who say there was very little for growth in this budget. Uh, what would you say to that? Uh, there is this idea, of course, that it's businesses, it's the private sector who has to absorb the jobs, and yet uh, how do they do that? Where were, the, where were the, the, the conditions for growth? Yes, you're calling it absorb jobs. Uh, they would argue very differently. They would say uh, by uh, bringing the public sector under control there will be more space for the private sector to grow, mm. and I suspect um, that that in the medium term is what we're going to see. We need to see that so-called supply-side response if this whole package is going to be successful. Um, time will tell. It needs to be accompanied by quite a number of other measures. You can already see uh, the government thinking through what's required. Now, I spoke to uh, Alistair Darling earlier on today and he was still talking about the, uh, the, uh, the Keynesian plan. Indeed, the idea that really we ought to be spending a little bit more to stimulate growth. Uh, are you absolutely adamant that this is the way forward? Well, there are a lot of misunderstandings here. No one is suggesting that we uh, embark on a neo-Keynesian plan and I'm sure Alistair Darling wasn't either, even if he paid a tiny bit of lip service to it at the edges. The fact is that all three major parties went into the election and still uh, maintain that uh, cuts in the public sector are required, that there needs to be a sharp reining back of the deficit. The only question is exactly at what pace and exactly how much when. Um, th th those are, by comparison with the scale of what's going on, um, those differences are relatively small. Mm. The Neo-Keynesians, on the other hand, they're saying this is all completely wrong. We shouldn't be cutting the deficit at this time. We should be uh, doing the opposite. We should be allowing fiscal policy to let rip because we're on the verge of, a, of another uh, deflation akin to what we had in the 1930s. We don't know the answer to that. Nobody knows. It's foolish ever to make predictions of that type. But I just point out that all three major parties are pointed in the same direction, along with the IMF, the World Bank, uh, the, the European Union and the raft of other institutions that look at these issues. Andrew Cherry, thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure.